Good morning. This is the power of prayer. My beloved, there is power in prayer. There's dunamis power in prayer. Prayer changes things, my beloved, and people too. So I have something for you this morning straight from the throne room of grace. Mother, fathers, bring your children around the set. God has something for everybody this morning. Everybody. If you got grown nieces, loved ones, cousins, uncles, aunts, wake them up and bring them to the forefront and let them see what God is saying to me to say to them. For God is saying this morning, let him work it out. We all going through something, my beloved. If it ain't one thing, it's another. I'm stalling a little bit while you're getting your coffee and your biscuits. Get your coffee, get your biscuits and your loved ones, as I say, and bring them around the set. And let's see together what God is saying. In perilous times like these, time while people calling good, evil, and evil good, I know what I'm talking about. What God is saying this morning is let him work it out. He will work it out. And my beloved, I may be a little host, but I'm telling you, I've been up praying and seeking God's face to see what he wants me to tell his people. I don't want to come to you any kind of way. I want to come to you prayed up. Uh, I'm not breaking in, in here saying nothing that I want to say on the end of the show, but I want to say it right now before it slipped my mind. You know, when you're getting them something, sometimes things slip your mind. This one lady called me the other morning. And she said she turned her TV on by accident. I didn't know my show reached that far. I didn't know how far these shows reach. I think Arkansas, Mississippi, I don't know. But she called me and said, I was thumbing through the TV. And I came across you. I said, wait a minute. And I stopped on you. And I want you to know you lit up the room. I said, no, God lit the room up. But that was so sweet of her that she said, this is my first time. Tell me when you come on or off. My beloved, that's why we got to be careful. I heard a lady one time said that be three years ago they did the 700 Club and Pat Robson said something and it was three years later that word was for her. We don't understand God. We can't figure him out. We just got to trust him because we sure can't trace him. I just want to break in here and say that. We don't know. Well, Sometimes people turn the TV on, they say and they think they turn it on by accident, but it's God. It's God. That one morning I turned on and uh, Pastor Robson, Arm Jean Robinson was on. And I tell you, just what I needed, it was coming out of her mouth. I never will forget it. But let me go on. I like to pray and get started on a 30-minute show. But sometimes you be so full and you don't want to miss nothing. And I just said, I just wanted that lady to know how much I appreciated her. So I'm going to pray right now. Father God, we come to you at this early hour of the morning because it's right to come. We come in with a heart full of thanksgiving. Show do thank and show do praise you this morning. For bringing me over the dangerous highways and byways. Holy God ain't even heard no bad news this morning. And I know, Father God, it's all about you. Father God, you brought me. Father God, when I wasn't fitting to be, didn't you kept me when I wasn't fitting to be kept? Lord Jesus, you kept your hands on me. When I didn't care about dying, Father God, I wasn't, didn't care. Didn't care about nothing. You still kept me. And I know you're going to keep me this morning. I ask you to anoint my lips of clay. Let this word fall on good ground. Lord, somebody need a word this morning. Somebody need a right now word, a rhema word as we call it. Somebody, Lord Jesus, is at the crossroad. Don't know whether to go right or don't know whether to go left. Just don't let them go back. I ask you, Father God, to speak to that man or that woman, that girl or that boy, and let them know, Father God, you is right there. You are knocking at their door. If they open up, you'll come in and sit with them. Father God, I just thank you for being God. And subside you, there ain't no other true and living God. Father God, did nothing slip up on you. You know everything. And Father God, I ask you to please stretch out your hands of love and touch us, Lord Jesus. Rock us and shake us and then shake us and rock us. We are your people. The sheep are your pastor. Call by your name, holy God. And Father God, you said my sheep know my voice, but a stranger will not follow. And Father God, help us, Father God, to get something, my viewers, from this word this morning, that Father God will take them a little bit further. And even the ones turn it on by accident, it wasn't no accident. Father God, I ask you to touch their needs this morning. And Father God, bless them even before the show is over. And Father God, I ask you to please, sir, Lord Jesus, keep their minds all day long stayed on you. But Father God, there's another mind out here, one against people's mind, trying to bring them into captivity. But you said, he who minds stayed on you, 
you would keep them in perfect peace. And I speak perfect peace for my viewers this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. I got something for you. God is saying this morning, let him work it out. My beloved, we've tried everything. We've tried it. We went to the bank. We went to the loan companies. We, we even switched the truth and exaggerated, which is a lie, to try to get what we want, and it still didn't work. We went to the car lot. The man said, you need another $100, another $500, and then you try to fix it yourself. Why don't you give it to God this morning and watch him work it out? That old bad girl and that old bad boy that you declare you can't do nothing with, give them back to their father. Give them back to their father and watch him work it out. That's what he's saying this morning. My peoples are not giving me enough credit. They lean into their own understanding. <clears throat> and their own understanding is leading them down a dark road. My viewers, read my lips. Turn it over to Jesus. Well, I don't want to turn, just turn it over to Jesus for my sakes. And then pick up the phone and call me and tell me. I know you're going to tell me he worked it out. Because if you turn it over to him, he won't no ways let you leave the same way you came. I know what I'm talking about. And he's saying, I'm asking you to turn your Bible to 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter. 2 Chronicles, chapter number 20. Because I get carried away sometimes when I'm talking about God. He's a friend of mine. He brought me when I didn't even know the way. I couldn't even figure it out. He brought me. And viewers, he'll bring you too. If you just turn it over to him. And I know it's fear on the land. I know. I get all kind of phone calls. People don't know whether to go right or left. I tell them just don't go back. They don't know. They're so full of fear and anxiety. And there's so much need on the land. People losing their homes, their jobs. Some of them even losing their sanity. But God. But God. I'm going to stop and pray for them right now. Father God, you see the needs of your people. Father God, you see the needs of the ones that's watching this show right now. I ask you, Father God, to please, if they don't know whether to go right or left, just don't let them go back. Lord Jesus, let them know you're with them, that you didn't bring them this world to leave them. Father God, we ask you to bind Satan right now. Bind him on earth, bind him in heaven as we bind him on earth. For Father God, we know <clears throat> there's no other power stronger than your power. And we know you're able. You know you're more than able. I ask you to help your peoples this morning. They're going to and fro, Lord Jesus, like sheep or cows on a pastor. Don't know which way to turn. I ask you right now, Lord Jesus, to speak to their spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Bills, it's going to be all right. Turn it over to Jesus and watch him work it out. That's what Jehoshaphat said. He put everybody on a fast. And he said, we're going to fast because we're going against an army that's much bigger than us. Turn your Bible to 20th, uh, Chronicles chapter number 20. <clears throat> you that uh, Chronicles chapter number 20 we're going to start at the uh, bah, bah, bah. we're going to start here about the let's see what verse we want to start at uh, verse number we're going to start at 13 we're going to get 13 now Jehoshaphat feared see fear my beloved is a tormenting spirit it, I call it faith upside down Jehoshaphat had an army coming against him, and it was more of them than it was of them. And he didn't know what to do. My beloved, I've always heard the older people say, fast and pray. If you want to see a change in God. Yeah, some people say, I'm on medication. I know I get the phone calls. I hear you. But is there 10 minutes or an hour you can fast? Well, just pray. Well, I don't care what kind of medication you're on. You still can pray. You can pray. And mama said, if you can't say a word, just wave your hand. Just wave your hand. God knows. He knows our heart this morning. He knows he know what's in our hearts that's the deceitful because our hearts hold things. But if we come to God with a true heart, he knows just what to do. And Jehoshaphat was against that. And I'm going to read it because I don't want you just to take my word for it this morning. I want to read it to you. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. Didn't I tell you? That's why your help coming from. It's coming from the Lord. You can't work this thing out. It's too far gone. We's under judgment. And we're going to have to, we need the Lord. You've got to have the Lord now. That's the only way you're going to make it. My beloved, he said, Jehoshaphat, seek the Lord and proclaim the fast throughout Judea. See? I don't, well, can you catch on 10 minutes? 
Can you stop eating for 15 minutes? It, it, he, I'm not saying fast. Uh, just fast. I'm not saying not take your medicine. But there is some time, my beloved, I know that you can fast if it ain't no more than 10 or 15 minutes. Let's keep going. And he put on a fast throughout Judea. And he gathered together themselves and gathered together others to help the Lord and to cry out to each and every city throughout Judea and ask them to come with him to seek the Lord. Come on. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judea and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the, the courts and said, O oh God, our Father, are not thou the God of heaven and of earth? Come on. He's the God of heaven and he's the God of earth. And all we got to do is ask him. He won't withhold no good things from them that walk upright. I know what I'm talking about. I was crying out to him one day. Didn't see no way. And I heard him say, be still and know that I'm God. My beloved, you got to be still now. I mean, it's chaos on the land. I, I understand. When I'm speaking and pre I'm talking to me too. Matter of fact, I'm talking to me first. But my beloved viewers, I'm telling you, hang on to him. I say as a horn hound, hanging over the beat, ride him all the way. Because Jesus is for us. He's not against us. There's another force, a dark force that's against us. But if we can just keep on, Paul said, forgetting those things behind you, pressing to the mark of a higher calling. And I always like to re uh, repeat 2 Chronicles seven fourteen, where he said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves. My beloved, it's time for us to humble ourselves and seek his face as never before. But you got to come humble. You got to get low. You got to lay pride down. He's not trying to work through your pride and what you got and how much you got. And who you, who you, what's your last name? He don't care nothing about that. My beloved, a trillion dollars, I mean, what not one man doing with a trillion dollars? But that's not what the show is about. It's good to have it if you're doing the right thing. But make sure you got the one that help you to get the trillion dollars, that help you to get the millions of dollars. Make sure you got him. God want us to live good. I'm not, I don't have nothing against that. But don't forget the one that called you and helped you to get it, my beloved. And his name is Jesus. I call him sometimes just us. He waiting to hear our cry. He said, I'm waiting just to hear you. He said, I beseech you, my beloved, to lean on me. You know, John laid his head in his bosom. He got so close. And we can do the same thing. He the same God. He changes not. We the one that changed. Time we get a few dollars above our bills, we want to show out. And we want to walk off and say, I did it. No, you didn't do it. It was by the grace to God. His grace is sufficient. My beloved, I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. But somebody's at the crossroads. Somebody don't know what to do. Them children, that if it ain't one thing, a husband, wife, if it ain't one thing, it's another. But that's the time we're living in. We're living in a time now they call it right, wrong, and wrong, right. My, 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 I know what I'm talking about. And we've seen this day coming. I've had this show going on 11 years. And that was the first thing I was saying when I came on, close to 11 years ago. They called it right, wrong, and wrong, right. But I, I behoove you. When I was talking that it was going to get worse. And now we're living in that day. We see things now we ain't never seen. But I heard him say it and I read it in the Bible. Ain't nothing new. It's just different, but it ain't new. Ain't nothing new. All this behead, all this stuff was in Bible days. All this locking up the wrong people for nothing, all that. It was in Bible days. My beloved, good God Almighty. But he still remains God. Good God Almighty. He still sits on the throne. He still sits high and look low. He still remains God. All you got to do is lean and depend on him. Lean on him. You got to lean on him. My, 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 my. Lean on Jesus. He is the way. He is the truth. And he is life. There's life in this world. I don't care what you say. Well, evangelist, I, I tried and it didn't work. Look, keep trying. One day with him is like a thousand years. So keep trying. You can't put no limit on him. He's too big. You can't figure him out. He said, my ways is higher than heaven and earth than your ways, my thoughts than your thoughts. So my beloved, you got to come the right way. We want to seek all kind of ways to come in. And well, I came, but he didn't answer me and I got tired. My beloved, you only hurting yourself because he don't need you, but you sure need him. Especially in our like we're living in now. You need my savior. My beloved, when you lay your head on that pillow at night, you don't know whether you're going to wake up the next morning. You need the Lord. Let's keep on in, in, in uh, Chronicles 
Second uh, Chronicles 2, and let's leave, we're going to start right here now, Baba. We're going to start at the, uh, we're going to skip down to the 13th verse. It says, And all Judea stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. See? You've got to come. You bring your children, your cats, your dog. When you're going on a fast and when you're talking to God, you've got to pray for your children, your grandchildren, everybody that God brings to your spirit, my beloved. And number 17 says, You shall not need to fight this battle. Look at God. When you, he fasts and they put all them people on the fast and they fast. And I'm going to stop right here and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to break it here and tell you something that just shot up through my spirit. Something like Jonah. Jesus told Jonah, say, go to Nineveh and tell those people they sinned and come up from my nostrils. Tell them I'm going to destroy them. And then, instead of Jonah going to Nineveh, he caught a ship and went down to Tasha. Called itself fleeing from God. My beloved, there is nowhere on earth you can go. If you go to the pits of hell, he there. It's no way in the world or nowhere in the world you can flee from the face of my God. And when he went down there in, in that ship, called them little people to throw over all their clothes and everything. Because he was hiding the trouble on both, hiding from God. You've got to be careful who coming in your house now. Who's you talking to and how you talking to them now. You don't know what these people are running for. We're living in a day that you've got to pray so God can show you when trouble is on the board, when trouble is on the land, when trouble is on the way. And he went down and they throwed all their little clothes off. And then he woke up and said, I'm the trouble on board. He know he was the trouble. But when, he th got, when they throwed him over bowl and that whale or that fish swallowed him up, and when he went to hell, somebody said, well, that wasn't hell. He was in the belly of a He was close to hell enough in the belly of a whale. But that booger had sense enough to look up and cry out to God. And that whale spewed him up. And he went on. He went on to Nineveh and told those people what God said. And that king started pulling off his robe, putting all them people, everybody on the face, and sought God and repented and turned around. I said, you've got to repent. I don't know who I'm talking about, but it's time to repent now. And he turned, and those people turned around, and God spared Nineveh. And guess who was the first one got mad? Jonah. Went sat on a Joppa tree pouting. See, sometimes we'd be praying and stuff, and we, when that happened, we'd be the first one to get mad. Let me tell you why I know what I'm talking about, because I'm talking about me now. We had this friend. And we had to take her everywhere she had to go. And just take her. Take her. And we were praying for her to get a car. I was the ringleader. Lord, give her. I was the ringleader praying. And the girl got a car. Guess who you think was the first one got mad? Me. You don't know what's in your heart. Your heart is the seat for it whole thing. you got to tell on that devil. In order to get free, you got to let that devil know you, you know he is the devil. And God is God. And subside him, there ain't no other God. That's why sometimes, my beloved, you got to put your hand on your hip and let your backbone slip. you got to draw a line and tell that booger he better not cross it. I double dare you to cross it. And he was the first one got mad when God, that's pouting, because God spared that city. See, and God said he'd have spared Nineveh. He'd have spared, excuse me, he was uh, spared Solomon and Gomorrah if he could have found ten righteous people but couldn't spare them. But my beloved, I'm praying for this COVID-19 for Washington Parish. I'm praying for the hospitals to be cleaned out. I know I ain't been warned, but I know other people that join me. Let's just pray so these people can get out of ICU and get out of the hospital base and go home. All over the world, let's pray for them. All over Louisiana, all over the 50 states. But we, I'm in Washington Parish, especially I cry out night and day. Because so much fear. I know what I'm talking about. You need to see my phone calls. And we on YouTube now, all over the world. People's are thin, they're crying and out, and my beloved, and if you call me, and I don't call you right back, it may not sometimes be a couple of days, but I promise you, I will call you back. I will call you back, but it's just so much, and I don't have a prayer line. I'm not big like that. I don't have people to answer the phone for me, and some of you just want to talk to me anyway, and I'm here for you. I just had to break in there and tell that, but let's go on back to Jehoshaphat. Okay, it said, ye shall we down to number 17. Second Chronicles chapter 20, number 17. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand still. Come on here, stand still and know that I'm God. So stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. O Judea and Jerusalem, fear not. Fear is a torment spirit, didn't I just tell you? Fear not. God got it now. They done went on a fast and they done prayed. Now it's in the hands of the Lord. The Lord has got it. They ain't got to do nothing now but stand still. Now I beloved. it. There's a place you can come in God. Call it the secret place. 97 Psalms say, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide by the shadows of the Almighty. 
There's a secret place in God you got to get. Now, how you get to hell, baby, you got to go through something you ain't never went through. You got to cry sometime all night long. You got to walk the floor sometime all night long. You got to meet your name on the highway. I know what I'm talking about. You got to be ridiculed, mistreated by your own folks. David said, I could understand it if it was the people in the street, but it's the one that sucked with me at my own table. They're kicking up their heels against me. My beloved, they come with a price, but, they, but you can have it, but it come with a price. Are you willing to pay the price? It's a price to be paid. I know what I'm talking about, but you can get it. You can be so full of God that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against you shall be condoned in judgment. I know who you're looking at a woman now. Had not been for the grace of God on my side, I don't know who I would be. Good God Almighty. I get carried away sometimes, but that's all right. Let's go down to the 17th verse. It says, Ye shall not need to fight. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Oh, you dear in Jerusalem, fear not. Not be dismayed. Tomorrow, come on here. Whoever got that problem that they don't know what to do, or whoever got that child or that daughter, that son, or whoever got this big need standing in front of them, tomorrow. I said tomorrow. I know what I'm talking about. Whoever need food, need a place to stay, need a car, need to hear from the tomorrow. Put your hand on your hip and let your backbone say, Such a moral devil. God coming to see about me. I know what I'm talking about. And then pick up the phone and give me a call. Tomorrow. I got that word underlined. Tomorrow. And said, He will be with us. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face towards the ground. And all Judea and his inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord and worshiped the Lord. Come on, him. They worshiped God. And my beloved, I don't know who I'm talking to. But you've got to turn your face to the ground. You've got to look down sometimes. You've got to just, just, just get out of you. And you can pray in your car. You can pray, but sometimes you, and if you can't say a word, just wave your hand. But tomorrow, say tomorrow, it will be, tomorrow going to be a brighter day. It's going to be a better day. Come on. It said, and when he had consulted with the peoples and appointed singers and, and people to sing and sing praises and of beauty, of holiness, they went out before the army. And to praise, praise to the Lord for his mercy endures forever. I told you, his mercy, ain't no end to his mercy. His mercy endures forever. And when I'm down to number 24 now, it's just a 30-minute show. I've got to skip about, you know, to get it all in. And when Judea came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked into the multitude, and behold, they was dead. God already slayed them tomorrow. He slayed that army. Jehovah fact, then they didn't have to do nothing but pray. And God slayed that whole army. And they said they looked and dead body was all in the streets, all in the road, all in the field. And they had on all kind of jewels and diamonds, just all kind of jewelry and pressure. Let me read that. And when Jehovah fact and his people came to take away the spoils of them, they found among them abundance of both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. They were three days in giving up the spoils. It was so much. Don't tell me what God can do. Then they returned, every man of two Judea and Jerusalem, and Jehoshaphat and the forefront of marching. They got the victory now. See, when you get the victory, you can march. You can march and not break a rank. You can march. They had the victory. All that army coming against them, and they didn't know what to do. And they prayed and they fasted, and God said, Be still and know that I'm God. Be still. Just look up. And they kept, kept going, kept going. He said, tomorrow, by this time tomorrow. And then they looked and went in, that all the men were dead, laying everywhere with all kind of jewels. And they went in and stripped everything off them. Took them three days to pick up the goods. I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking to you, man. I'm talking to you, woman. Just wait on the Lord. He has, he has not, God is not enough. He more than enough. If you just wait on the Lord, he shall renew your strength. You would bound up with wings as eagles and run and not be weary. Don't worry about who's coming against you. Even in your own household, you got two against three and three against five. But my beloved, what you got to do, you got to call on Jesus. I said, call on Jesus. I call on him in a midnight hour. I wake up with my hands and I'm groaning. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Groaning. You got to groan. You got to talk to him. 
It ain't no better time for me, I'm talking about me now, than the midnight hour. And then I go in the kitchen and take my communion. I mean, he says, as often as I take it, I'm showing forth his suffering and his death. He says, I can take it as often as I want to. My beloved, we got to be packing something. We can't sleep all night. We can't be on the phone all day. We can't look at all this stuff going on in the world. My beloved, you've got to keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep your eyes on Jesus, for he will work it out. I know what I'm talking about. And repent when you do wrong. So many of you call me and say, oh, I had, was just about there, I thought, but I messed up. Just repent. Just repent. That's all he told us to do is repent and turn away. Paul said, forget the things behind you. Press into the mall. And James said, he's a rewarder to those that diligently seek him. You've got to seek him with your whole heart, my beloved. You've got to seek the Lord with your whole heart. And I tell you, he ain't hard to be found. He's just waiting there for you. But he's waiting for you to come to him. My beloved, we ain't got no more time to be playing church and be playing games. We ain't got no time to be that church of Leo the Seer, as I preached on my last message. You ain't got no more time to be naked and don't know it. You better salt the Lord. He'll show you. He'll show you your own self. He'll show you your flaws. And if you go to him honestly, he'll show you what you need to re even repent for. And sometimes you know, but you sometimes you just want to hear him say it. I know what I'm talking about. God is not enough. He more than enough. He all you need. And you sure need the Lord. I don't care. Do what they're telling us to do. CDC, to do it all. Mass, the shots, everything. But you better pray. You got to pray an hour like this. You got to call on him as never before. We got to call on God now. We got to pray for each other, check on each other, love each other, because I ain't never seen so much hate in the world as it is now, so much bitterness and anger. People's angry, I don't know. They're just me. I'm just being myself, good God Almighty. And don't get mad with them. They don't know. But just pray for them. And pray that they'll get a mind to read that word like you will. We can't talk about people. We can't beat the hell out of them. We got to love the hell out of them. God didn't beat the hell out of you and me. He loved the hell out of us. And I was a wretch undone. Hey, I say I was a wretch undone. But I just cried out to him. With groan and to him with groan that could not be uttered. And he came to see about me. I know what I'm talking about. He come to see about me. And I ain't tell you, I know the day, but I don't know what the next second going to bring. We got the whole old to him. As I always say, there's a home hound hanging over the beach. I asked him, I just want to close to walk with him. I just want to walk where I can feel his pus. Because he want us to walk close to him. Well, I'm running out of time. My time just about out. 30 minutes ain't enough. By the time you get wind up, it's time to unwind. But I thank God for Jesus. I give a shout out to my producers. I give a shout out to my viewers. Hold on. Help is on the way. Bye-bye.